Redhead Geek Show. Redhead Geek Show. Redhead Geek Show. Redhead Geek Show. Redhead. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but I liked it. The moon is cool, isn't it? Such a beautiful thing. Don't you also like Wi-Fi? Remember when complimentary Wi-Fi spots used to be kind of a nice commodity? Whereas now, if a business advertises its hotspot in the window, you roll your eyes like, of course you have Wi-Fi. Why wouldn't this place have Wi-Fi? I wouldn't even walk in if it didn't have Wi-Fi. Who doesn't have Wi-Fi? What if I told you the moon is now a Wi-Fi hotspot? I bet that could make even the most jaded among us go, what? For the first time, scientists are demonstrating the possibility to beam a wireless internet signal across the 238,900 miles separating us from the moon. Yeah, this is happening thanks to MIT and NASA researchers using four telescopes based in New Mexico that send an uplink signal straight to a satellite that swirls around that moon of ours. Interesting, huh? Do you like Star Trek? What's with me asking you guys what you like today? Microsoft will be providing a Star Trek Universal Translator service for Skype, which can understand spoken words and translate them into another language. The translator will be available for Windows 8 this year, you know, because it owns Skype and gets first dibs, and also available for other platforms soon. This will be a great way to keep Skype as competitive as possible. I wonder if it'll be free. Google's new self-driving car is frightening and small. <laughs> if you remember the Toyota Prius and the Lexus RX 497H prototypes, they required a person as a safety driver in the front seat as part of their operation. The new prototypes take this idea to a whole nother level by completely taking out human participation. All you can do is push a button to start or stop the vehicle, as well as give it your destination. Technology inside the car is based on computer programs that can make predictions regarding surrounding objects. Also sensors that contain cameras and radar for evaluating real-time occurrences. Apparently the car can only reach up to 25 miles per hour, but we'll be able to see 600 feet in all directions in front of it. The day we see these things on the street will be in interesting one. Why driverless cars though? They are supposed to keep occupants safe by avoiding the distracted driver epidemic that we call you, me, and everyone else. And I'm not even talking about a rainy day in Austin. It's like a nuclear blast went off. While I'm talking about Google, I'll keep talking about Google. Apparently the company is overwhelmingly white and male. Quote, we're not where we want to be when it comes to diversity, states the company. We've always been reluctant to publish numbers about the diversity of our workforce at Google. End quote. Maybe that's because the report states 70% of Google staff are men and 61% are white. In fact, government reports on other major tech companies obtained by CNN Money last year show similar lack of diversity among the workforces of five other major tech companies, Cisco, Intel, Dell, eBay, and Ingram Micro. You know, the United States is 63% Caucasian, so I don't know how overwhelmed you can get when you crunch those numbers and then get surprised by them. I sure hope they aren't discriminating anyone, though. Finally, check out this weird Mercedes ad that brings Mario to life. Apparently, the highly anticipated Mario Kart 8 Japanese version will feature Mercedes cars. Japan only. Only in Japan. Just Japan. Only in Japan? Everything about this is fine until the 22nd mark where it becomes frightening. A non-short, non-chunky Mario gets out of the car. And what the hell is that? Oh. That's all I got for ya. <laughs> like and subscribe to my weirdness. And my video, too, if you want to.